In this video, I will discuss why the M120 V12 engine is one of Mercedes' best engines in service for almost 30 years. Through Mercedes' long history of over 120 years, V12 engines have only been a part of the engine lineup for a few decades. Today, we will cover Mercedes' first V12 engine. We'll start by looking at the different variations of the M120 engine family, such as the 6-liter M120, and later we'll move on to the AMG variants, such as the M297 7.3-liter engine. In the mid-1980s, the malaise era that swept through the automotive industry was ending. Times were good. The trend of opulence led BMW to introduce a V12 engine in 1987 for the new E32 7 Series. Mercedes was already developing their upcoming W140 and moved to introduce their own V12 engine in response to BMW. But Mercedes wasn't going to simply match BMW, they were going to outclass them. The M120 was finally introduced in 1991 in the W140 S-Class. While BMW's 5-liter V12 produced 296 horsepower and had two valves per cylinder, Mercedes had four valves per cylinder and six liters of displacement to produce over 400 horsepower. This was a modern, all-aluminum engine with variable valve timing for its intake cams and utilized forged steel connecting rods. Torque was strong at 428 foot-pounds. The compression ratio was 10 to 1, which was relatively high for a big engine at the time. And of course, the iconic startup sound can't be missed. A few changes to the M120 occurred over the years. In late 1992, power fell to 389 horsepower to reduce emissions with the removal of the full throttle enrichment programming. In late 1995, the engine management changed to the more advanced Bosch ME system with individual coil packs instead of the old LH system with a distributor. Otherwise, the M120 did not go through many other changes during its life all the way until its final appearance in a standard Mercedes model, and that was in the 2002 SL600. Now let's move on to the AMG variants. A tuned version of the 6-liter M120 exists, delivering 440 horsepower. These engines received a reworked head with bigger intake and exhaust valves, as well as different camshafts. AMG then introduced a larger 7.1 liter V12 in 1995 with just over 500 horsepower and that was used in the 72 badged cars like the SL72. The later SL70 had the same 7.1 size with around 490 horsepower. AMG later introduced its largest displacement engine for its flagship cars with the 7.3 liter for cars like the SL73 with 525 horsepower on tap. This version of the engine usually received a carbon fiber engine cover and a good number of these were used for projects funded by the Sultan of Brunei such as the S73T produced by AMG. For the CLK GTR road car, AMG's V12 was pushed even further. There were two engines for the road version of the GTR, a 6.9 liter version with 622 horsepower, and later a 7.3 liter super sports version with 655 horsepower and 580 pound-feet of torque. The CLK GTR engine was dry sumped and fitted with a host of special parts including specific pistons, titanium connecting rods, a lightweight flywheel, bigger valves, and more aggressive camshafts. The engine used more magnesium parts and had a carbon fiber engine oil tank fitted. These top of the line big displacement engines were codenamed M297. 
The GTR was a collaboration between AMG, its racing arm of HWA, and even Ilmore Engineering, which was Mercedes' engine partner in F1 at the time. Truly the best in the business built the highly successful GTR. The story of the M120 didn't stop there. It was commonly used in concept cars like the C112 and in small volume models from other makes like the Megatrack and others. By far the most famous use of the M120 is in the Pagani Zonda. In 1994, Mercedes agreed with Horatio Pagani to supply him with engines, and by 1999, the C12 was launched and featured a 6-liter M120 engine with around 400 horsepower. Pagani quickly took advantage of the innovations by AMG and by 2002 offered a 7.3-liter engine in the Zonda. Improvements to the intake manifold, cylinder head, and exhaust system brought power up to nearly 600 horsepower for the Zonda F in 2005. The Zonda Tricolore from 2010 had over 660 horsepower. The track-focused version, the Zonda R, again followed in the footsteps of the CLK GTR as it featured a smaller 6-liter engine, just like the race version of the CLK GTR. Further improvements and development continued on this engine, and for 2017, the HP Barquetta's 7.3-liter V12 is rated at 789 horsepower and 627 pound-feet of torque. This marks the end of the Zonda and thus the final iteration of an engine that started life in the early 1990s. and AMG hand-built the engines for Pagani in Affaltebach. But only a few designated technicians worked on these engines. During the M120's life cycle, there were a few other tuners such as Brabus that offered 7.3-liter M120 engines that had similar modifications and power to what AMG offered. So the M120 really does have a reputation of being one of the best engines of all time, especially with the later work by AMG. It was the pinnacle of its time and Mercedes did not compromise. But what are potential flaws with the M120? The most notorious problems with these engines are oil leaks, chiefly around the valve covers and the front timing covers. Another problem area can be the lower oil pan and the front crank seal. Engine mounts wearing out are also something to keep an eye on. Possible reasons for all older pre-1996 engines to malfunction is the wiring harness degrading over time. This is because they used biodegradable insulation material. Also, throttle actuators can fail over time. If you were to buy a low mileage 2002 SL600, let's say, it'll be less likely for you to run into some issues compared to say an early 1993 600SL. But the truth is, is that this engine is now over 30 years old, and the crucial thing is that it has no major flaws, but rather a few small things here and there. The quality, longevity, and high-performance versions of the M120 makes a strong case for this to be one of the best Mercedes engines. Especially considering that the M120's replacement, the M137, was less powerful and less reliable. Even BMW never managed to counter the dominance of the M120, with the clear exception of M's S70 engine. 
the S-70 made nearly as much power in the McLaren F1 as was available in the CLK GTR. So in summary, it's not just one of Mercedes' best engines, but it's also one of the best V12s of all time. Thanks for watching. If you want to support this channel, take a look at my store. Link is in the description. If you want to see more Mercedes and AMG content, subscribe for more videos like this one.